most important trend that we see is that anybody can broadcast themselves. Take your online channel, your account, and create your own TV application and reach your audience directly. So broadcast TV, in a sense, will die out and internet channels will take the lead. With VOD, uh, uh, and especially in connection with our customers, we have a vi varied range of customers. And what's really important for us is that we can actually offer them something unique and something different. Um, the beauty is we can actually complement VOD uh, services also with information and assets for them to sell other, other services and other offerings off the back of it. So actually, from a technology point of view, it's a very, very powerful message for us. Uh, and we really want to embrace that um, going forward. Apart from the ITV player I've been working on, uh, I quite like uh, Vivo. Uh, it's quite a minimal, uh, slick website, and they use uh, big imagery quite, quite heavily. And uh, it's almost making the interface secondary to the actual content, which is quite good. My favourite VOD service has to be the BBC iPlayer. It's great for downloading content on the move. Functionality is so easy to use, and I love being able to rewind live shows back to the beginning. So I think over the coming year I'd like to see much more of a blurring of the boundaries between the kind of uh, VOD experience that has been created with services like iPlayer over the past few years uh, and the more traditional live experience that you get from, from linear TV. Because I think with the um, introduction of, of, of smart TVs and people consuming content uh, without the linear stream as, as the kind of discovery mechanism, it's going to be very important that we provide much more of a curated experience um, through our on-demand products. Um, I think integrating a VOD with live TV uh, will become a trend. I think the notion of having, uh, having to wait for a program till a certain time is quite old-fashioned. So what we'll see in the future will be integrated VOD with live TV. So essentially you could uh, go back uh, in the timeline and watch the program from the past or from the present, which means live. So programs that are currently, uh, currently being, uh, being watched will be equal to uh, VOD on-demand content. I think video on demand solutions are a sustainable stream of revenue for um, content owners. Um, ad funding goes without saying for a lot of these brands, um, you know, they're ad funded models. The thing that we see with our clients at the moment is that there's a number of broken formats. What we're doing is we're transferring what would be seen on linear playback experience on TV or PVR um, across digital products. Um, consumers don't respond to this very well. You know, pre-rolls that come um, at the start of a program, mid-roll, post-roll, it's not digitally centric. And what we're trying to work with our clients to understand is how we can create more contextual ad formats that consumers will adopt more effectively and will still maintain those revenue streams for the brands themselves. One of the biggest challenges is not necessarily even the content owners' brands and changing the way that they're thinking. It's more about the media companies trying to move away from a very tried and tested model where they know they can get X return on investment for their, their brands, Procter & Gamble of the world or whoever it may be, um, and try these new formats whilst they're still fledgling. Um, there's going to be, have to be a leap of faith with these media companies to ensure that we can then trial these new formats more effectively into the mass market to ensure that the revenue streams are content owners can progress? Well the short answer to that is that it depends on the content. Yeah, if there's good content then sure uh, video on demand services can be sustained by advertising alone but it depends on the breadth of the content, the quality of the content. Um, there are some services out there that only have 200 programs at a time. My guess is that they don't have enough content to sustain uh, a business model based on advertising alone uh, whereas the bigger players like ITV for example and 4OD they could uh, have a model sustained purely on advertising, even though they are also experimenting both. Will Apple release a TV? I think people may have got the wrong end of the stick here. I actually think Apple may not release a TV. They may release a TV service or an interface that sits on top of television. Uh, there are many companies offering very you know, uh, fantastic TVs, curved TVs, 
different type of TV technologies. I think Apple moving into that sector is going to be quite tough. I actually think what they're going to be doing is offering a TV service that's very unique as an interface layer that's going to sit on top of any TV. And I think that's where they're actually going to make their mark. So I think that the mobile and tablet is just uh, growing at such a rapid rate at the moment. With iPlayer we've seen that grow from 17% last year to 36% this year. Um, I think that the, we're seeing people treat their, their tablets more and more as a portable television. For me it's definitely mobile devices, so iPad, mobile phone, because for me I tend to watch TV so I have a drama on the background and on my lap I'm watching a documentary. Dramas I don't need to listen to, documentary I can just sit and watch. So for me that's what it needs to be.